What's up, Emo Geeks? Welcome back to another episode of Feedback Friday. We are back with an amazing episode with Julia from Hims and Hers. What's up, Julia? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So you are the lead email developer and designer at Hims and Hers. Could you talk a little bit about what your day-to-day -day sort of looks like? Yeah. So I've been with Hims and Hers for over three years at this point. So I handle everything that has to do with email dev and design at the company. So every email you see these days is designed or coded by me with a little help from one of our junior designers who is getting trained with it. So what is uh, Hims and Hers for people that might not know? So Hims and Hers is a telemedicine company. So we have prescription products and then also over-the-counter products and everything is handled 100% online. Nice. Yeah. I feel like you guys are definitely growing. We've been following the email brands. We did a previous feedback Friday, but it's kind of fun to come back and, and see what you guys have been up to. So yeah, you did a feedback Friday with my predecessor, I think three years ago as well. So fun to do a little evolution. Well, let's talk about this first one. This email has been really popular in the last uh, couple of weeks, getting a lot of views and collections on the site. So what do you think makes this one really good? What kind of stands out to you? The really beautiful imagery is a big one. And the short copy center aligned is always nice for a more promotional email. This one specifically, the goal is to promote hair RX to prospective customers. So there's a big, bold eye-catching headline, and then some short copy, moving on to some beautiful lifestyle imagery. And then below that, there's a really separate secondary module that does a good combination of highlighting our products while also infusing some of our value props in there with the 24-7 support, trusted ingredients, things like that. Yeah, I really like this one. I think just kind of going back up, you kind of have that upside down pyramid that drives your eye towards that CTA of Get Started, which is a pretty good CTA uh, copy. And then, um, yeah, one of the rules I think that we've tried to cover on this series is like the three line of center text past three lines, it gets a little hard to read. So it's really cool that, you know, on both the headline and the, and the subhead here that you've kind of stuck to that and, and made it pretty, you know, looks good on both desktop and mobile here, so. It's actually a little bit of a funny story with the headline. This was a little bit of an older email that our lifecycle marketing team had repurposed. And sometimes they'll go in and edit the copy themselves just to save dev and design resource bandwidth. And so I think the original copy was pretty short and that's why it was so large. And they went in and kind of replaced it with some longer copy that made it like super, super giant. <laughs> So we were, we were a little surprised when we saw that one come through, but it's definitely eye-catching for sure. Hey, we like big headlines, big text. <laughs> the bigger, the better. So It especially goes with maximizing. It's a very maximized headline. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I like this little section here. I think it's pretty responsive on mobile. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, know, but do, you, do most people on mobile or most people on desktop on your list, do you know? Most people view on mobile. Cool. Yeah. I do feel like when we are reviewing emails, we definitely always try to look at that mobile view and kind of, it's almost mobile first for a lot of people, just because I think 50% plus is on mobile. So it's good to have an experience on both. So yeah, definitely having a really seamless mobile experience is essential. Yeah. And then I like the little hover effects here on desktop. I think that's a nice little fun thing to add if you have a little bit of extra time. It just adds a little bit there. We have that coded into all of our templates. So that's a little hover effect that you'll see throughout a lot of different templates. Nice. I, I try to just like the opacity hover on some of these images to just kind of see that they're clickable. So I'm not, you know, telling you to add anything, but that's just a fun suggestion that I have. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I love that. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> uh, and then pretty simple on the footer here. For kind of a more medical orientated company, it's it's pretty cool that you're able to put a lot of, you know, simple text here and then having those privacy terms of service links here that maybe can people can click through, but trying to have not too much legal in the bot in the bottom of the footer if you don't have to. We try to keep it pretty like sleek and customer focused, which means that the terms and conditions are definitely available, but they're kept organized at the bottom of the page when possible. If there is something earlier in the content that's really important to have a disclaimer like right next to it, we'll move it up there and make it work into the body of the email. Mm -hmm. But for these ones, it worked out to keep them at the bottom. 
so is there anything else on this one or would you make any changes or try anything new or A-B test anything? I think for this one, one thing that's nice is that lifestyle image of the product in use, that's a PNG and the background is a coded color. So on dark mode, it works really nicely. The colors will flip and then that image will stay exactly the same. Really, I mean, that hover effect idea is a great one. I think that's easy to add. So definitely would implement that. And then I think we've talked a little bit about it on the previous episode that we did, but you know, why is, I think a lot of beauty brands don't usually use live text. So is there sort of a push for live text at Hims and Hers? Yeah, Hims and Hers has never done image-based emails to my knowledge. I think it's just important for the customer experience to make it really accessible and really clean and sleek. And a hand-coded email definitely does that over an image-based email. So it's always been important to the brand. I think a lot of the times when you see other brands doing fully image-based emails, Maybe they don't have a developer that they're working with, or it's mm-hmm. just faster to get it out. But um, we do have the resources on the team. So it's something we devote a lot of time to. And I think another one of the benefits is when we're testing and trying out different things, we have all of this coded out as HTML. So we can quickly go in and change copy or swap out an image and do some A-B testing. Whereas if you have a fully image-based email, that's not as straightforward. Yeah, like you mentioned, someone kind of editing that headline copy, it would be a lot more difficult if you this was kind of locked up in an image. So, All right, so this one has a really eye-catching gift here. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. I think for me, gifts, I don't always like text in gifts or having to really communicate a, a really important message in a GIF um, just because, you know, there's different fallbacks and things like that. You know, most things are supported nowadays, but... I think something that catches the eyes, bring people's in, kind of leads them down the email is the way to go with gifts. So what what do you think about this one? Yeah, I love this email. This was a launch email for our new hard mints product. And this GIF was something I worked on with one of our motion designers, Carolyn Crenshaw, to create. And it was really important to me to be able to show how the tin works. It's one of a big different differentiators of the product is It's not like your typical ED pill, it's a hard mint. So it's a little little more fun and playful in that way. And so being able to show that the tin kind of slides in and out and reveals these mints inside was important in the launch email to me to get in there. Yeah, definitely grabs your eye. And again, you know, having that um, sort of upside down text leading into that Get Start CTA is pretty cool. Uh, And this breakout section here, I think a lot of people would, you know, lock this up in an image, but it is kind of nice to see it sort of laid out in desktop and mobile, especially mobile, you know, being very easy to to read on on that smaller screen. For mobile, we also have the image flip to make it a little bit more smooth for the customer, but I think it's definitely better to have it be live text. So if the image doesn't display, you're not missing any of that crucial content about the product. Yeah, these are pretty short and sweet. Do you sort of uh, try to keep them shorter, even if it's a promotional email? or? Yeah, we have amazing copywriters that are able to get the essential message in pretty few copy because we know that when people are looking at emails, they're mostly just scanning, so they don't want to read through a lot of copy. So we try to keep it as brief as possible while still communicating the essential information. And we also really like using bullet notes to do that. So it's super scannable and user-friendly. Yeah, these checkboxes definitely help you sort of read and and scan that email a lot quicker. And I think, you know, the main goal for email a lot of the times is to really just sort of get that click to a landing page and someone can, you know, read more there or, uh, you know, make a purchase on that page. So Sometimes it's, I think, for promotional emails, just getting people to that landing page, giving them enough information to pique their interest in this stage is the way to go. We did some testing around this one where we included a module at the bottom that included value props about the company. So it wasn't 100% focused on the product, but also included some value props about provider trusted ingredients and 100% online and chat support, everything like that. And I think that performed well also. So even though it was a little bit of longer format, kind of adding those value props resonated with people. For this one, when would someone sort of get this email in the maybe flow? 
So that one is in what we call a visit pending series, which is kind of like an abandoned cart. So if someone comes to this site and they start an online visit to explore ED medication, but they don't finish it, they'll get pushed into this visit pending or abandoned cart series. So this email falls into that flow. Nice. Yeah. I really like this type of email. I feel like it definitely solves sort of a customer problem. I think sometimes with brands, they only focus on the promotional stuff and they're really just kind of speaking to that audience. But this one really feels almost like a dialogue with that Q&A sections and definitely super easy to read and kind of bringing that your FAQ in a simpler form into an email is really beneficial, I think. So this was when I worked with one of our junior designers who I'm kind of mentoring on email design right now named Savannah McCann. She did a great job working on this email. We tried to strike a balance between it feeling marketing, but also a little bit more transactional. So we have the pops of colors, which feel fun and kind of more like our promotional comms but it is pretty content forward. So we keep the gray and white and black theme, making it really easy to digest for the customer to get all the value from those Q and A's. And then I guess, how do, how do you discover that, you know, an email like this should exist in the flow? That's from doing a lot of customer research, really digging into the data, which our lifecycle marketing managers are great at. They kind of know like, what are the hesitations along the process? Why is, what are the reasons someone might drop off in the visit pending flow and not complete a visit? And so they create emails that really target around those hesitations and try to speak to them on the customer level. I definitely like emails that sort of help people along in that customer journey definitely shows, you know, that a brand is kind of thinking about that relationship with the customer and trying to provide them some additional information. Exactly. Because there are some customers that are just ready to go and they'll go ahead and sign up, but there are other customers that they need a little bit more time. They need a little bit more information. So we just try to make that available to them in the most digestible way. And do you guys have a more traditional abandoned cart type of email or are they more sort of informational focus? We have different, the abandoned cart, like visit pending series for our different products. So they're each really geared towards that product and speaking to the specific questions that might come up or concerns or just information people might want to know along that journey. So they're really all focused on those prescription products and speaking directly to them. And uh, what platform do you guys use for your email flows? We use Braze. Braze, cool, nice. Yeah, so it looks like someone has made a purchase. Could you maybe talk about some of the strategy around this one? So this is our order confirmed email. So this goes out to a customer right after they sign up for their first prescription order. And this one specifically is for our mental health customers. We really try at the top to strike a balance between it feeling transactional and also welcoming them to the brand. So we're kind of affirming the decision that they've made with the headline copy. Below that, we've got a moment where we're in reinforcing it with some value props, all you're getting with your subscription. And then we, of course, include the more transactional details, anything they might want to know about the order that they've just made. At the bottom, we've got a module that is available to them if they need help, they're not sure where to go, they have any questions, we try to make it super easy. Yeah, I definitely like that sort of post-purchase receipt that is a little bit more, you know, welcoming to the brand, a little bit more informational. So I like when brands sort of do something like this, that after you give them money, they still kind of contact you with some information and some additional touch points along the way before your order is delivered. And then even after that, kind of that post-purchase experience as well. Yeah, it's always important to keep nurturing the customer relationship. So this was actually, we just redesigned our full suite of transactional emails. Those emails needed had needed some love for a little while. So this email was actually the first one in that redesign that we did. It kind of set the tone for our new color scheme and design elements, how this one has a gray background with these white modules on top with the drop shadow. And that's really consistent with our account page on our website. So they look pretty drastically different from the transactional emails that we were sending before. And so since these are newer, we're still kind of waiting to hear back on how much of an effect they've had and where they're benefiting the flow and what we can maybe iterate on to change. So follow up with you on that one. 
Cool. Well, yeah, I definitely like a more designed receipt type email. Sometimes you just kind of get the plain text. Thanks for your purchase. But to me, I think it is kind of nicer when you sort of have a, a well-designed email that sort of brings everything together and you feel sort of secure about your purchase and you can, you know, have the information that you need. That's exactly it. That was our previous com was more just simple, a headline, some body copy and the order details. So this one is a pretty big improvement. Cool. And then you said this one was focused on a specific product. Do you sort of have a separate email for different products? So each of the products have kind of their own brand identity, which is mostly about the colors that we use for them. So you can see that the letters in check and then the letters in all the time in the second second module headline, those create this little like gradient. So for our mental health products, that's part of the brand identity is those gradient colors. So I created those by, I used like a span style on each of the letters to create the gradient feel overall. But some of our other products have, they might have like a green color, like you saw with hard mints, that one was all about green. So we try to be mindful of that when we're creating comms to make it specific to whatever product they have ordered. Cool. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't see the gradient on live text. That's, that's a pretty fancy move. So <laughs> that's a nice one. All right. Well, any other final thoughts, any maybe advice that you'd give to a new email marketer or someone that's looking to make emails kind of like this? Yeah. I think the first step would just be like we talked about earlier, kind of trying to depart from full e image-based emails. I think there's a lot of benefits to doing live code if you can, if you can swing it. So that would be my first piece of advice is trying to learn about getting some HTML and CSS going. And from there, just try to be creative and um, test out different ideas and always keep learning. Yeah. And I think you mentioned, you know, you sort of have like a design system. This stuff sort of seems laid out in a pretty similar way. Yeah, so we've gotten a lot more um, consistent with our design system this year. We used to design everything in code. So as we were coding, we were also designing at the same time. And that was nice for speed, but it wasn't helping us so much with scaling. Mm -hmm. So we've now moved our design into Figma and we have a component library, which is basically like wireframes of all the different modules with all of the styling stripped out but we have a space for the image, the copy, we have all the character counts associated with it. So it makes it really easy to create a new email. We just kind of create the shell and then pull in all the modules we want for it. Our copywriters know exactly how many characters to use and then they can edit exactly already in Figma. And then once it gets to me, it's adding all those design elements, all adding all the final touches and making it feel really special. And it creates a lot more cross-channel um, communication on it. Nice. Yeah, I feel like I like that flow a lot. I feel like it feels like a very, very modern flow than just getting a PSD and maybe, you know, having to cut out all the images and everything else. So I think it's cool when you can work with a designer and developer in that way, and, you know, have a lot of feedback. It makes the emails a lot better in the end of the day. Yeah. And it was a lot of work to set up a lot of time, but it really has sped things up so much more now that we have it in place mm -hmm. because we also have HTML snippets that are associated with the Figma components. So once we have the design all set up, when we're ready to code it, we just grab the pre-coded wireframes of the HTML and we just start plugging in the design elements and the copy. And then lastly, I think you mentioned something about AI. Do you guys use AI on some of your emails? We use a little bit of AI to help us write some of the liquid logic. I've been working with um, one of our MarTech engineers with that. So if you scroll down a little bit to the order confirm or order details module, that is actually a, a content block so that we don't have to code that into each of our order confirms. Because as I mentioned, there's a different one for each brand. Mm -hmm. So as much as we can plug things into content blocks. And if we need to make changes, just put it into one editable space. That makes it a lot easier. But sometimes we'll want to do things that are a little bit more complicated with the content blocks. 
Like for example, if we do want to switch the colors up with different brands, we can create one template and then add in some liquid logic that creates an element like color for the headline and create a content block that's assigning color within the content block instead of in the template itself. So we'll have one template where we can swap out the color for the headline in the content block separately. So we might use AI to help us with something like that just to create that shell of the content block since it's a little bit more complicated. Do you use like really good emails for other sort of stuff? Oh yeah, I have a calendar reminder on my calendar every Monday to go on to really good emails and look for inspiration. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we have a Slack channel called, I think it's called like email inspo or something like that. And I'll just share, try to share like one email from really good emails each week in that channel. So people can feel inspired and know what's going on in the email world. All right. Well, thanks for joining today. I really enjoyed our chat and uh, thanks for showcasing your emails. There's a lot more on the site and definitely people have probably been inspired and have been collecting these. So thanks for submitting and really appreciate you having taken the time to walk through these. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool. All right. Have a good one. You too. Thanks.